Hello Capricorn, welcome to your monthly reading for October 2024. This is for Capricorn, Capricorn Rising and Capricorn Moon. And if you are new to my channel, I use astrology and tarot and my guides. So you feel like you're getting a personal reading. Now, this is a big month. This is a big month. As you can see, we could get off with a new moon solar eclipse, but this is a month of just taking it easy and making and, and, and letting all this magic around you unfold. So many auspicious aspects this month, really great trines, really big relationship, energy, personal connections, karmic relationships. I mean, those are going to really be highlighted, especially as we're in Libra season. At the beginning of the month, we have this new moon solar eclipse in Libra. Um, and for a lot of y'all, when I say relationships, it can be career related. Libra rules your 10th house of career. A lot of Capricorns will be changing careers or having adjustments in careers. And if it's not you, it may be a boss that's leaving. And there's going to be a lot of that because remember, we're Libra's still on the South Node. So there's some like release, there's letting things go. So a lot of y'all are possibly even maybe starting your own business or there's something here really nice for you with this new moon solar eclipse. Now, if you're not here for career, 10th house is fame. <laughs> it's fame and public recognition. It's honors, achievements. There could be something here where you're exerting all your energy into that you want to be known for, okay? Just think about something that you're really passionate about. So this is definitely going to be a big month. And then, you know, when we do move into Scorpio season, oh my goodness, wow. That, and we have Scorpio energy throughout the month. Remember, Venus is in Scorpio. Mercury is going to be moving into Scorpio. And then we move into uh, Scorpio season. Scorpio rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. So you see what the progression, what's happening here for you, Capricorns. Get very, very excited. Also, when we move into Scorpio season at the end of the month, that's a lot of personal transformation. That's a lot of like seeking your truths, doing shadow work really big big thing 11th house is also friendships groups you belong to organizations you belong to you'll have a big emphasis on that toward the end of the month okay so you may be really really excited about that and spending a lot of time with friends and whatnot uh one thing i want to point out all the inner planets venus mercury mars they've come out hard this month they've come out to play again i said there's so so many great trines that especially venus oh my goodness it's got to be really special so a lot of movement in love and money in uh creativity beauty everything that venus represents now if you are new to my channel i'm just going to give you the you know big highlights of the month then i'm going to break it down uh, or no, then I'm going to do your spread. That's when after that, I break it down week by week. I pull more cards and I let you know all the aspects I want you as Capricorns to look out for the best days. Um, you can see the, all the best aspects. As, uh, aspects are in asterisks. Okay, is that what was that card? Uh, call, card. Now I'm saying what is that card? I mean called. What is that when it's uh. Anamaya Pia? Or I don't know. Anyway, uh, also, like, I will also mention, like, days that I want you to watch out for. And not all the aspects are on the whiteboard. All right. So let me go ahead and point out the big themes. Obviously, this new moon, solar eclipse that's happening in Libra. So, again, big changes with, you know, career profession. What out for a lot of y'all? It's in your 10th house. And um, I do talk about this a lot more in the live stream that I did as well, that new moon, solar eclipse. Okay. Remember, it's really big. Um, and I'll talk about it a little bit more after I do your spread. All right. Right? Just know that's going to really drive this month. And again, a lot of partnership activity, relationship activity too. Okay. Now, uh, October 4th, I definitely want you to pay attention to this aspect. Venus will try and Saturn. Oh, so special. Enormously special. This is long lasting love. If you're here for love, this is uh, Saturn brings out long term energy, that commitment energy, stability. Uh, and if you're not here for love, hey, there's I mean, again, relationships, partnerships, maybe you're forming a business with a business partner. I, it's something here really special creativity, money, okay? Very emotionally driven as well. Something with communications as well for a lot of y'all. Something with writing, researching, maybe even siblings, aunts, and cousins, neighbors, as well as part of the third house. You may even be doing some short distance travel around this time. This, by the way, the first week, just to let you know, and especially on this day, um, because Venus is in Scorpio. And then Saturn is in Pisces, two water signs. And we do have this great, you know, water trine, grand water trine that's happening. So very emotionally driven week. But this is going to be a big, big day. And don't forget, Saturn is your ruling planet. So, of course, you're going to really feel this. Um, October 8th, another great day, Venus trine, Mars. 
really special, okay? What's not on the whiteboard, not on the whiteboard, is that same day Mercury is going to trine Jupiter. So one of the best days of the month. All right. And I didn't have, an, I of course, like, again, not all the aspects are in here. I don't have enough room. There's so much happening. Now, Venus trine Mars. You know what happens when Venus and Mars gets together. Um, and this is truly, listen, Mars is in Cancer in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So again, you're going to have a lot of emphasis there. And one thing I want you to remember, if Venus is what you want, if Venus is what you desire, Mars is how you get it. Okay. It's that action that you take. So take that action. Okay. Take action. This is just very high vibration harmony. Okay. Uh, if you think about ancient mythology, uh, think about, you know, even like Roman mythology, uh, Mars and Venus had a daughter, right? Concordia, the, the goddess of harmony, right? And so uh, even in, you know, uh, think Aphrodite as well, Greek, you know, pleasure, passion, love, all of that, everything is connecting around this time. Uh, love, romance, uh, art uh, could be a big thing. I mean, this is a great day to also pitch, negotiate, schedule a, an important conversation. You need to have that. You want luck around this day. Remember, I said Mercury is trining Jupiter, the planet of good fortune. Good luck. I mean, this is also you coming up with like a brilliant idea around this time as well. Really special, really, really, really special. Okay. And again, this is happening in your seventh house and eleventh house. So partnerships, one-on-one uh, -on -one commitments, relationships, it can be career, it can be friendships here as well with Venus and Scorpio and your love of thoughts of groups you belong to, even social media, there could be something here with social media, but your hopes and wishes and dreams. So really, really love this. And remember, and see, Jupiter will go retrograde the next day. So take advantage of this day. Okay, I'll talk about Jupiter going retrograde and also Pluto going direct later. Pluto is going direct and your sign bookends of you know any planet going retrograde direct are really strong now pluto means business right power empowerment going back go, or going direct in your sign capricorn for the last time in our lifetime so you are truly going through some changes here um of course we'll talk about later after you know and not only after your spread but in the weekly forecast to follow october 13th sun training jupiter best aspect of the entire month okay this is the sun trining jupiter enormously abundant um even though jupiter has retrograded it's still like you're gonna feel this all right this is success this is you know doors opening for you all the good stuff expansion good luck a fortune wisdom profit i mean the list goes on especially again with relationships i mean this is Really, really special. There could be something here with colleagues for y'all. There could be something here with like health matters as well. Uh, it is your sixth house, so your everyday activities, but work is a big thing here, okay? Now, the same day you see Mercury will move into Scorpio. This is, Mercury and Scorpio, by the way, is more Mulder than Scully, okay? Uh, if you are a subscriber, you'll know what that means. Uh, but this is really, really going deep, exploring the unknown, all right? But also loving it really loving it and this is when i say exploring the unknown including yourself remember i talked about like doing that shadow work doing that shadow work but loving it loving it all right really getting to like those truths that you're seeking so october is you know in a sense a preview to this big exit that's happening because we do have this new moon solar eclipse in libra and then we also have don't talk. <laughs> so dramatic right uh and then we have the full moon in aries hello Remember, the lunar nodes, the points of destiny, are in Aries Libra. All right, so uh, this full moon in Aries, and before they move into the Pisces Virgo axis, uh, that's a whole other thing that I've been talking about, and that's going to happen in January. And so we're leaving the Aries Libra axis, and so this full moon in Aries, Aries rules your fourth house. There's something coming to it. A lot of y'all are moving, possibly, maybe moving in with someone that you met. I mean, this is your fourth house, okay? Their real estate matters. There's something here with your children as well. Maybe they're moving on to college. Maybe some of them are moving overseas or you know there's there's family stuff here um so keep that in mind all right this full moon aries is really strong it's a super moon but what i want you to do is actually i want you to think about what happened for you changes that happened for you around april 8th when we had that new moon total solar eclipse in aries right 
April 8th. That was big. That was big. So uh, something that happened on that day or even that entire month because it was such a big eclipse. What were the changes happening around your life? Okay. There's something ending, something coming to a turning point, something being illuminated around this time with this full moon. Any Aries full moon, by the way, in general, is just very bold and powerful. Okay. Now, Aries ruling planet Mars is a little feisty around this full moon. Just keep that in mind, all right? So with the fact that, and he's also like dipping his toes in that retrograde. Remember, Mars is about to go retrograde, just kind of, you know, dip in, dip in here. Uh, Mars in Cancer. Don't forget, that is your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Your, you know, opposite sign in Cancer. So something here with partnerships, relationships. Again, it can be work, it can be career, it can be love, romance, whatever resonates with you. Just something there may be some kind of power struggle because remember what i said mars does he doesn't do really well in cancer he's been here for about a month and a half at this point he's getting impatient he's getting feisty okay this mars is the the warrior the god of war imagine the god of war in cancer right the sign of nurturing family love and loved ones and protection all that think about the god of war sitting around a campfire holding hands with like family members you know singing an Adele song everyone's crying because it's such a beautiful moment or maybe think about like Mars the god of war doing like air kisses at a housewarming party or whatever Mars doesn't like any of that does not like any of that okay so that's why it's like argh. uh so you're gonna feel it around this time like kind of like power struggles and I see this because we are getting close to like a Mars Pluto opposition that's gonna happen in the beginning of November so just remember to be cool stay frosty handle things with grace be your authentic self you're going to be fine remember this may be something with partnerships or relationships for you all right fortunately the good news is all the other planets have gotten together with mars and said mars chill out just chill out okay uh and you see he does for the rest of the month all right so that's that's great and then Lastly, on that same day, yes, it's a big, 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 big day. Uh, Venus is moving into Sagittarius. Venus in Sagittarius is so carefree. It's so optimistic. It's so fun. It's so beautiful. It's, you know, really unbound, like open heart, open mind, a bit whimsical. I love Venus in Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius does rule your 12th house. So that's going to be very interesting. And it's the 12th house is everything beyond the physical plane. It's intuition, spirituality, it's healing. Uh, it's the subconscious. So there really could a be, you know, there could be some like really great things happening behind the scenes while Venus and Sagittarius for you. There could be a lot of you that's unrooting things from your subconscious. So you're like, okay, like I mean, I, but there is this nice flow this day, because again, not on this right board, but on the same day, Venus will sextile Pluto. Again, Pluto is in your sign. So another day that's enormously significant for you, okay? And not, remember, this is you coming into your power, empowerment, a lot of structures uh, that are changing for you. You're, you know, it, it's it's got to be big. Um, but really great energy, okay? Especially with, like, relationships and money, too. Now, October 22nd, we officially move into Scorpio season. So love, relationship, finances, all of that really highlighted in Scorpio season. And again, and seeking your truth getting really molder by the way all right the truth is out there but the truth is also inside you and that's what sun in scorpio is the sun in scorpio wants answers and that's going within and so this is seeking your higher your highest truth okay um for the next four weeks as we're in Scorpio season. All right. So going deep, having that personal transformation uh, and even wanting to do that shadow work. Remember, wanting things to come to the surface. OK, remember Mercury's in Scorpio as well. Uh, and that is your 11th house. So there could be something here with friendships, groups you belong to, organizations. Like I said earlier, your hopes, your wishes, your dreams. Asking yourself, is this what I want? Is this what I truly want? Yes, it is. So let me like, you know, get to the core of this and let this be my big transformation, my big moment. So anyway, this is going to be big. As, as we do move into Scorpio season, on that same day, the sun will square Pluto again in your signs. So I just want you to be mindful of that because the sun is still going to be, the sun's actually going to be in Libra bef when it squares Pluto, meaning this is as this aspect is happening at 29 degrees, which is a critical degree. It's an anoretic degree. Again, like power struggle lead. So just be mindful. Again, we will talk about it more in your weekly forecast, but even still tons of 
of, of moments this month. Really powerful aspects. Um, ultimately, a big month of change. This Things are changing. This is a game-changing month. But remember, at a slower pace, okay? The four retrogrades really are asking you, think, feel your way forward, okay? Toward being the, becoming the best version of yourself. Really go within. And with all this water energy, you know, very emotionally driven month as well. But, you know, live the reality you want to create for yourself and take that action. Use these aspects to your advantage. Capricorn, this is going to be a really big month for you. I want you to know it's a really big month. Um, especially, you know, with career matters, if you are here for that, if not just something that you're deeply passionate about that you want to be recognized for, it can even be like, you want to be the super, like no seen as a super mom or whatever it is, just whatever resonates with you, but let's get started. Let's see what's going on for you Capricorn for the month of October, 2024 for Capricorn, Capricorn rising and Capricorn moon. So Capricorn. I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Capricorn, you know I love y'all. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I, I yes, I just want to address if you are new or even if you are a subscriber, um, I have been under the weather and I am getting toward my finish line for that. So, but I do want to. Thank you so much. I have the deepest gratitude for all your kind messages. And thank you for being patient with me. And let's get to it, Capricorn. Let's see what's going on for you. All right. So, yeah, this is going to be above. There's going to be some changes. Some things that you're going to want to let go. Uh, it, you're going to identify it. Let's identify what we need to let go and move forward. Okay. Because it may be keeping you up at night. Uh, remember, eclipses are game changers be the author of your story. Okay. Be the author of your story, have the change that you want, create your reality. And then remember eclipses can also eclipse things out of your life. Work with that energy because it's bringing something new into your life. Okay. It's making room. So, uh, you're going to be fine through the end of it all, but let's talk about this. You got the seven of pentacles. So again, career may be a thing. Uh, finances, something that you've invested in. It could be relationships. Remember, pentacles are your physical reality as well, something like within your material world as well. But think about like how far you've come. Think about everything that you've worked hard for, blood, sweat, tears, heart, and soul. And so a lot of y'all may have already been doing that. Remember, we still have, you know, Libra and the South Node. And so a lot of changes with career. Sure. Finances, sure. Ask yourself, what is truly going to make me happy? What is going to bring that emotional fulfillment? All right. So uh, there may be some adjustments you're making, changes you're making in terms of your path forward, in terms of what you have invested in personally. Okay. And again, it can be career, uh, it can be job, but there could also be something that you're considering, um, you know, next steps. Okay. But I really want you to hold on to that, you know, emotions, be in touch with your emotional side. All right. You didn't get any um, cups here. Uh, so let's see, you got the nine of swords as well and the heart of your spread. All right. So nine of swords. This is it does seem like there may be someone else involved for a lot of y'all, by the way. Uh, maybe not seeing eye to eye was, uh, you know, like I said, partnership relationship or even a family member. There could be a friendship involved as well. And first things first, don't let anyone dictate your feelings. Don't let anyone dictate your emotions. Don't let anyone take away your energy ever. OK, Capricorn, never let that happen. Secondly, there just may be something that you may be overanalyzing, overthinking. But remember, I said you're going to be going really deep this month. OK, especially when we get toward the you know middle half, uh, because Pluto will go direct in your sign. We have all that squirt. We move into Scorpio season. But anyway, you have the nice words. This is a card where it is. Yeah overthinking, maybe over analyzing things. Maybe there's so much taking up your headspace. Um, really take that time facing everything that that's happening. Okay. Uh, one thing that I like about this card, you see the comforter here that is present. <laughs> you see the beautiful roses. Okay. Red blood, action, passion. You see the beautiful astrological symbols. All right. So he can find comfort doing nothing at all and just letting all these, you know, thoughts and, you know, swords are the mental suit. So it's weighing in on him or he can get out of bed and find comfort that way by taking that action, removing the swords one by one, one by one. All right. So 
this is going to be a month where um, I really want you to recognize the things that you know you have to let go. And it may be things that are not fulfilling you, um, that you're recognizing and figuring out what is going to fulfill, okay, or emotionally fulfill me and make me, you know, feel all this joy moving forward and not overthink things. Yeah, you're going to be fine. Clarified, yeah, the King of Pentacles. Uh, yeah, so we're the King of Pentacles with Seven Pentacles here. Yeah, sure. Could be something with money. Could be something with money, but you if you don't overanalyze that, if you let those things go, you're going to be fine. I, yeah, I'm going to talk about that devil in your crown too. Devil attributed to Capricorn. I'll talk, we'll talk about it in a second. Let me get to this first. Um, but King of Pentacles, the richest king. King of Pentacles is someone who is practical, very grounded, someone who is clearly like... He's a good protector and a provider for those people in his family as well. Okay, but this is someone who's owning his wealth, someone who is very confident, and someone who has that self-trust. Okay, so again, trust your intuition. Be your authentic self. That's going to serve you well. You have the five of wands here. Okay, so there may be something here with um, uh, just, again, it just... I'm really getting like colleagues, maybe not seeing eye to eye with colleagues, maybe uh, someone, you know, in a work capacity maybe happening, but five of wands, these are kids. These are kids swinging their wands in the air. It's really just like not worth your time energy that's coming up with your five of wands. A lot of competitive energy here as well. So there could be some, you know, it could even be like friendly competition, but like just again, not seeing eye to eye. And it can't even be family. Remember, you have like family stuff happening if it's not career was, but just drown out that noise okay what's interesting is when i look at this is like as long as you don't overthink things or analyze things and let your thoughts weigh on you and just find that way to move forward and use these aspects to your advantage and be in touch with yourself it's, you're going to be fine okay because this is also showing that you may be coming out of like that noise that's been happening okay now you have the devil in your crown uh, let things go. <laughs> let things go. You, there are some things where, you know, Venus is in Scorpio that brings that intensity as well. But even still, I told you that Mars is in Cancer. Mars isn't really happy in Cancer. And it could be like, it. it's a, your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Okay. And so now you see, you've got the devil in your crown. You see the two people from the lover's card here chained to the devil. So there could be something about codependency. There could be even like, a toxic boss, a toxic work environment, a toxic, uh, you know, uh, colleague is something you've got to recognize, something you have to recognize. It's in your crowd. You're probably already thinking about it. You're probably thinking like, how do I say they, the chains, right? They're loose. They can break free. It's a matter of taking that action to break free. You have to really want to break free from this. And remember, this is a month where you may be going really deep and doing that transformative energy and doing that shadow work too. A lot of shadow you know, work here as well. This is just like something that it just seems like something's taking up a lot of headspace. Okay. Devil also addictions, vices, bad behaviors, uh, you know, obsessions, things like that. All right. So just keep that in mind that, you know, with the devil up there. And again, the devil is your card. I'll clarify that one for you too. Yeah. Listen, you're getting like, you're going to be fine as long as you just let, let things go. Don't let things take up too much headspace. All right. When you do that and, uh, you know, have those moments of release, have the, release brings relief, right? So you got the four wands. You listen, there's something that once you let that go, you're going to be fine. This is a card of joy and celebration. It's milestones. It's, you know, getting proposed, getting, uh, you know, married, getting a uh, promotion, having a baby. I mean, they're moving in with someone. I mean, just think. These milestones and definitely like family related, possibly fa like home family. Like I mentioned earlier, this is an Aries card, by the way. So remember that rules your fourth house, the foundations of your life, even like significant other real estate, things like that. So, wow, wow, there is. And that even could be like the source of this double energy. But just remember, just recognize what is it that I possibly know I shouldn't be doing that may not be good for me and taking up all my energy can I release it? Let me release it because that's keeping me up at night. And if I do, like, look at all this wealth and abundance and joy. You got the queen of wands as well that in the rootier spread. And this is great. She attracts whatever she wants. This is the queen of wands. Okay. People gravitate toward. She's very charismatic. She's very regal as well, but she's the fun queen. We love the queen of wands. You see the sunflower in her hand, sunflowers in her throne. They, you know, 
the sunflowers exist in the actual sun card. Therefore, she has the powers of the sun, optimism, abundance, like sunflowers lean toward the sun. Right. So you're you're listen. It just seems like there's a lot of activity up here where where when you've got the queen of wands at the root of your spread. Oh, yeah, you've got a plan. you got a plan. You're making things happen. Again, Queen of Wands is very entrepreneurial as well. She's a businesswoman. So a lot of career stuff here. Uh, you see the black cat here. She's in touch with her shadow side. A lot of power. She's power, okay? You see the, by the way, the uh, pyramids in the background. Are you, if you're into Egyptology, you know, cats were worshipped. <laughs> they had like so much power. Anyway, you got a lot of power, but there's just some things that I think that up here, let's let that go. Okay. Remember, I also mentioned, uh, you know, no uh, cups. So you want to work on that emotion. There. And then six of swords. Yeah. That's leaving everything behind in this moving in this headspace that is just calm and beautiful finger on the turbulent water look at the direction of the boat they're leaving that behind they're moving into the promised land it's going from chaos to calm you know look at there's no undulation in the sea from this moment forward remember swords up here so that's really great so it seems like you are going to be uh you know potentially moving out of it but you got to do that work okay let's get to your stuff Capricorn, big month, big month for you. All right. Let's, uh, if you like this reading, by the way, it'd be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Talk to me, talk to me. Uh, and you know all of y'all, Capricorns. All right. So let's see what's going on. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, uh, listen, you've got a lot happening here. There may be some sensitivity with partnerships, relationships. Okay. Again, that can be love, it can be career. You got the two of cups. Great. Remember, I talked about. No cups here, but wow, <laughs> this is great. Uh, two of cups. I mean, this is true love. This is true love. We say this is the soulmate card, right? Like in 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 layman's terms, this is really great. Uh, to becoming one, you know, sharing yourself, opening yourself up with someone. Uh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Okay, so really have that time, like communicate. It seems like that's what you want. There's this, uh, even like this new partnership that you may be seeking, or maybe even a new phase in a partnership that you have. Really nice energy. Continue to move forward there. I mean, again, you see that beautiful couple there. Uh, listen. And if you look at this, when you move past that double energy, look, they're free. They're free. That couple there, they're free. They're just, they got flowers to run around. They're, they're happy. Okay. Uh, four cups. Okay. So again, another nod and wink to partnerships and relationships because this card is a cancer card. It's actually moon and cancer, but even still, cancer is your opposite sign, partnerships and relationships. So there may be someone in your life that may not be, you know, seeing eye to eye with you, someone this is a card of like emotional discontent too. Uh, it's highly associated with like apathy and boredom. And so this is a card when this card comes out, it's more like that this person has to work on their gratitude and appreciate things that are in their life. So they're just maybe not seeing eye to eye on something with someone this month. Okay. Uh, just bear that in, in mind. Um, it is in your external factors area. And if, again, if you feel that it's you, it's that action that you have to take. If you feel like things are not like going your way and you're not emotionally, you know, content, you've got to take that action. Look at what's waiting for you. And then you got the hermit, which is great. Remember what I said, this is a month of like doing shadow work, going deep, that transformation, that soul searching. There you go, the hermit. Because when you do that, you're all the wiser. You come out all the wiser. This is someone who's all wisdom, gray and Tara's wisdom. This card is all gray. All right, so I really love this. And the hermit is Virgo, by the way. Remember Virgo rules your ninth house of spirituality. Your belief system, higher mind, all of that. All right, so really, really go deep. And six of cups in your final outcome this is one of the most beautiful cards i love the fact you got these two sixes okay six of swords with the six of because it shows that things are starting to harmonize for you but you've got to do that work once you do that work everything is harmonizing for you in this beautiful powerful way there may be some things coming back from the past too okay you know with the south node by the way uh with that libra energy for the first half of the month even around that eclipse this card is highly associated with nostalgia it could even be like a friendship um something just really beautiful here this card is actually attributed to sun and scorpio remember the sun is moving into scorpio this month too so a lot of energy around your hopes your wishes your dreams but there you go you got the six cups here there's that emotional fulfillment there's that kindness and sharing and gratitude and love and 
protection. Most of all, this is the biggest house in tarot, okay? Indicating all this security and 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 stability and protection. I love this. You're good. Remember, you're moving into the place that's of protection. Even when you look at this card, you see the ferryman over the couple here, like protecting them. You see the swords in front of the boat. A lot of protection here. You're fine. You're going to be moving into this great place, okay? So, uh, but do that work, right? Capricorn. All right, so let's see what's going on for you for each week. First week, the new moon solar eclipse in Libra on October 2nd. Listen, uh, you know, eclipse is our six month series. Something's playing out for you here with career, okay? Uh, it's a strong eclipse. There is going to be a big, it's a, you know, it's a faded event. You know, it's a turning point. Feeling this change, of course, you're going to feel a lot, the most of it within this week you know even the first two weeks or even like the whole month um and i say this strongly because it is at 10 degrees that is a cardinal degree so a lot of cardinal energy you being a cardinal sign you're going to be really affected by this eclipse all right so uh changes to come but you will feel driven all right and remember it's at 10 degrees one zero equals one new beginning a lot of new stuff happening here all right remember oh and on this eclipse too mars is a little uh, cranky all right so just something with partnerships relationships here mars is just in one of his you know moods someone took his parking space just you know remember it's all about being patient all about you know uh just being your higher self being in touch with your higher self okay handling things with grace being responsive not reactive all right now um because mars is gonna be a little impatient around this time but just there's some decisions you may be weighing now uh and remember it's all about that emotional growth that uh, you should feel and it is water by the way I think I mentioned this earlier this great grand water trine that we're moving into with Saturn in Pisces Venus in Scorpio Mars in Cancer I mean I think even like the moon will be in Scorpio uh, later this week as well I mean well yeah after the you know eclipse in Libra but uh, so yeah a lot there could be like a big um, it could be an emotional week it could be this big emotional release for you all right now uh, we did talk about Venus trine Saturn October 4th October 5th I want you to watch out for this day Mercury square Mars this is a day where you just may be feeling that like there are some things that you want to say. <laughs> um, to say it in a mindful way. If there's a big important conversation, remember three days from now, you're going to have Mercury trying Jupiter. So wait, okay? Because Mercury square Mars. This is a day where Mars is going to try. It's trying to trip you up, okay? Try to make you do something impulsive, say things you don't mean to say. So just be mindful this day. Now, one thing about Mars is Mars is physical energy, okay? So if you feel like, ah, burn it off energetic go jogging go go to the gym go you know do gardening go you know hang up some paintings whatever it is like be active all right that's what's gonna help okay so let's see what's going and remember mars is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships there's something here let's see what's going on for you capricorn for the first week of october <laughs> you're gonna be fine you're going to be absolutely good. Like that, listen, this eclipse is great. Uh, you're going to love it, okay? You're going to love it. So just bear that in mind. There's some changes happening. There's shifts that are happening. But you see you got the Ten of Cups here, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. Happy everything. That's happy everything, all right? This is a lot of, like, speaking of, like, freeness. And, like, look at, there's so much innocence in the card. You see the happy children. You see oh, <laughs> the happy couple. So remember partnerships, maybe a big thing for you. Home energy, really big thing. But also just even just that emotional fulfillment is here. That for uh, So there's, there's some stuff happening, all right? This is, again, 10 cups, uh, so much enlightenment, so much joy, so much, like, with relationships, with love, with feelings, uh, emotions, mm, really heightened, a rapturous even. All right. So I really love that energy for you. Now, uh, second week. Oh my goodness. So it just seems like there's something you're going to really, something you're going to get that you really want the first week. Now, um, second week yes we talked about venus trining mars on october 8th and mercury trying jupiter jupiter will go retrograde on october 9th until february 6th okay jupiter going retrograde it's you know it happens every year so there's nothing unusual about this so it really is just kind of like taking that time to really reflect on how far you've come okay and especially in a work capacity uh especially when jupiter since may when jupiter did move into gemini 
how things may have expanded in your daily life, how, you know, there could have been, you could have gotten like really busy too, uh, especially with the work, all right? There could have been some big work activity. So Jupiter going retrograde is really just asking you to go within, think about how much wiser you've become, maybe even think about like areas in your life that you want to become wiser in as well. All right. So, uh, yeah. And then, you know, Pluto is going to be going direct on October 11th and, this is again the last in our lifetime Pluto and Capricorn your file Pluto is finally leaving your sign okay so this is you in your transfer like you setting up new systems for yourself uh Pluto all about like death and rebirth transformation okay power empowerment come into your power come into your power and you're going to feel it. You're definitely going to feel it. Of course, we'll talk about more in your weekly forecast. Um, so, and then on October 13th, Sun trining Jupiter, the best aspect of the month. Don't forget that one. And then Mercury does move into Scorpio. So let's see what's going on for you for the second week of October. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. And that it was. That's great. I love that. Go for it. Don't, don't, no turning back. No turning back. This is fiery. Knights of fire, ones of fire. This is double fire here. This is someone who is on a mission, ready to go after his passions, ambitions, a lot of creative energy here. Wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all are traveling to some degree around this time as well. I mean, that may be something for y'all, but even still, go toward, just continue to move forward. No looking back. No looking back. All right. Third week, uh, October 14th. Um, yeah. So this is Monday. The sun will square Mars. So this is just another time where Mars is a little. Or, so remember how I talked about like Mars's physical energy? Well, when Mars is squaring the sun, this is a time to physically slow down. So this is to like physically, you know, pull back. It can be like draining energy because Venus is going to be opposite Uranus this day as well. So there could be just like, A, don't start a relationship this day. Um, but it's just like maybe there may be something like really surprising that comes up, especially with a friendship um, with y'all. Uh, something here that uh, I just want you to keep an eye on. Um, but we'll talk about this again with in your weekly forecast. Now, October 15th, Venus trying Neptune. Look at that big turnaround. This is absolutely enormously amazing. This is romance, creativity, imagination, just feeling really inspired. Really great day for artists, by the way. Now, on October 17th is when we have the huge full moon in uh, Aries, okay? Super moon, really strong, really big, all right? So this is in your fourth house. So activity, culminations, turning points, things being illuminated in family, home, children, the foundations of your life significant other there may be something here for you okay uh and uh, yeah and the venus is moving into sagittarius again which we really really love so let's see what's going on for you for the third week of october <laughs> you're gonna be fine you're gonna be good you got the star okay so everything is where listen the star that's the stars aligning for you that's faith that's wisdom a lot of healing here as well with the star this is also that trust that self-trust that faith having faith in yourself having faith in the universe star card 17 when seven equals eight eight is prosperity abundance but it also references the strength card okay so pulling from that strength but you're gonna start seeing things growing in your world uh this is this is amazing okay Love this. Now, last week of October, I love Mercury trine Saturn. I really want you to pay attention to this one, October 21st, when Mercury trine Saturn. This is an amazing day to put emphasis on something that you want long-term goals in, all right? Especially with relationships, finances, investments, okay? Saturn, remember that long-term energy. Saturn being your ruling planet, all right? And remember, Mercury is in Scorpio. Your hopes, your wishes, your dreams have... The, it, there could be a big conversation here that's really beneficial for you. October 22nd, we move into Scorpio season. So really big emphasis on, you know, love, relationships, finances, as I mentioned earlier, personal transformations, but also your hopes and wishes and dreams and even friendships. Uh, and well, let me just see if there's any other aspects here. I really love Thursday, October 24th for you. Mars, sextile Uranus. Mars and Cancer, sextile Uranus and Taurus. Surprises, really big, unexpected surprises that may have to do with partnerships, relationships, 
home matters, significant other, children. It's beautiful. This is amazing. And this is so nice to have Mars sextile Uranus, a very supportive aspect that works in your favor because we've had, you know, you know, Mars squaring your, like all those other like squares and whatnot. So this is just really nice to have. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to end it with October 31st, uh, Mercury trining Neptune. I love this. This is definitely going to be really big for you. Right. And I say that because Neptune, remember is in Pisces in your third house of communication. And it's having this auspicious, you know, meetup with Mercury, the planet of communication. There's something here with imagination, okay? Compassion, speaking compassionately. There's something here that's really beautiful. But I would definitely, like, this can be a little, like, really, really daydreaming. But it is happening in Halloween. So, yeah, costumes, they're going to be, you know, off the charts. Go out, be social. Mercury wants you to be social. Remember, Mercury is in Scorpio in your 11th house of your friendships, groups, and community. So, definitely go go out all right so let's see what's going on for you okay for the last week of october mm, you're good you got the emperor power empowerment this is the ruler uh this is divine masculine i mean this is like mastery of self this is enormous. This is absolutely enormous. Okay. I lost, I mean, that's power. That's, you know, sitting in this throne that holds a lot of power. He's the ruler of the land, ruler of his destiny. Okay. There's this driving life force with the emperor. You know, he holds the world in his hand. He's fully protected. Remember, we talked about that protection energy. How funny is that with the emperor? You see, he's fully armored, right? Beneath his uh, robe there. All right. So, Real, a lot of family energy. Remember I said that you're going to start feeling a lot of uh, family energy. The emperor is the dad of tarot. So it could be some things with his father. Because, you know, this new moon so eclipse, it's 10th house. That's also like represents father. There could be father energy or a paternal figure, figure, authority figure. There could be something there. But it's also like you coming into your power. And this is just even like, you know, it's masculine energy. So you just being like the authority. Like whether you're, you know, whatever. It's just, remember, it's just masculine energy. Anyway. This is really great. You're going to be fine. Just don't just listen. I think there's some source of like something happening that, you know, you have to, you know, leave behind. Uh, and it may be like a big fight, like in your own head. But also there may be someone that may be putting you, you know, like I said, it could be like even like a toxic boss or there's something there where you're just like, I've got to like move forward from this and you see once you do you're going to be absolutely fine well that definitely there may be someone who you know what how much time do we have ah uh, okay i do one more clarify for you yep there you go there you go temperance you're gonna be fine um there may be just someone that you don't see eye to eye i it's actually more like that person doesn't see eye to eye with you okay just keep that in mind be you know uh just be responsive and reactive and it seems like you're gonna be fine you have archangel michael you have a guardian angel, you have an archangel in your external factors area that, you know, with that rates gratitude, whatever happens from the better, like it brings us like balance. You're going to be fine. This is, you know, having that self-restraint as well. It's, it really is at the end of the day, just having that balance, having that connection. And it comes from going within. All right. It's knowing that whatever path you're on, you're going to get there. There's nothing to stress about, nothing to worry about. The archangel saying you're going to get there. Everyone's on a path. You're going to get there. Okay. Just be patient. Okay. Just be patient. It's also, you know, I say that too, because you have the devil and the nine of swords energy. It's just like, um, if you are stressing about something, worrying about something, just ask yourself, when was the last time stressing and worrying about anything did anything positive for me ever, <laughs> right? So just know you're protected. You're moving into this great energy. You're going to be amazing. Capricorn, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Y'all are amazing. Next week, we will break it down. Um, uh, we'll go deeper in the aspects. All right. So thanks so much, Capricorn. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.